Hey all, um, something a bit different today. I had this idea in bed for a unit composition slash build slash overall battle plan strategy uh, that I just felt would be really strong and potent. And in the first part of this video, I use an insane AI bot as like a testing dummy while we go through workshopping uh, that very strategy, that build together uh, for the first time. And I thought, hopefully, you'd appreciate seeing my thought process and how I actually go about building up a strategy. Uh, and that, you'd be, you, that, that you would be interested in hearing all of my reasons why I want to do certain things. Um, so that's the first part. And then in the second, we go straight from that into a real PvP match. And we actually test out the comp against a real opponent. Um, I think it all ended up being pretty cool. And I hope you all like it. Uh, when I first started thinking about this, I thought it would be way more about the fangs and sledges. Uh, but in the end, and maybe as you'll see even in this video, uh, it's been centering more around a little combo that I have started to call Arc Jets. Uh, so all that being said, let's get in and see how it went. Alright, so for what I have in mind here, uh, I'm going to go for a quick supply specialist, Arclight Phoenix. Now, what do I have in mind here? Well, I've just been thinking about, um, basically, to, to sum it up as simply as I can, just running thoughts from my head. Um, I like to play around in the testing sometimes and try things out. Um, recently, I was just tooling around in the testing grounds, and I just really liked the way it looked when... Uh, sledges were in front, and I had a line of fangs with range enhancement standing behind the sledges and doing their damage for a lot more of the battle. Fangs are quite good units, they do quite a good amount of damage, um, and they're very effective at soaking up single target damage, uh, you know, from things like marksmen and fortresses and stuff like that. The problem with fangs is that usually, um, especially with me, and I think it's pretty general that fangs end up dying very quickly in the when the first lines of the battle meet, because a lot of things have splash when the first lines of a Mechabellum round meet, I think. And fangs just die instantly to splash. Um, but I also think that a lot of the splash in a Mechabellum match tends to be at the front as well. Like it's arc lights, sledges. You can get around this obviously by having things like range enhancement on them. Um, but they tend to be on the front line, I think. Um, Stormcallers is one thing that can be quite worrisome. Um, but in general, I think you're usually seeing stuff like Arclights and Sledges just kind of melt your fangs before they get to do much. Now, there is a purpose still to having the fangs on the front, because often you have you feel like you have more important units behind them. Even Sledges, um, or more, you know, things like your Arclights, um, your own Marksman, Steel Balls, anything else. And you want to provide a bit of, like, chaff time. You want to use the fangs to soak that up, right? That's pretty standard. But... I do feel like lately, especially because Sledges can be their own very good chaff in a way against Marksmen, which are popular. I do feel like I want to try this specific strategy of um, fangs behind sledges and everything else built around it. And let me get into more what I mean about that. So, one thing that I believe very strongly with Mechabellum so far is that it is not a game uh, where you should be following, uh, like, counter charts or, you know, specifically build this thing no matter what the opponent does. I don't believe that, and I, th I feel like it's very obvious when you see someone doing that. I think I do that in other games, like uh, when I played TFT for a bit, I'm also not very good at TFT. Um, I do that in a lot of games, you know, like League, follow this item, build, you know, this game, that game, especially multiplayer PvP games, you can just follow someone else's guide that's just like, hey, build this, do this, and do this, right? Um, I feel like Mechabellum is especially a game where that can be quite a trap for a new player coming in. Especially, like, the worst case of it is you look on YouTube and you see the classic YouTube meta of, like, whoa, big thumbnail. Whoa, is this unit OP? Hackers OP? Oh, Overlords OP too strong? Whoa, this unit combo, so OP, win every game. No, I don't believe that. Like, I don't believe um, that... Hang on, my togs. I need to shut my dogs up. I'm gonna have a train of thought here. One second. There's, there. Sorry, that should be better. Uh, but yeah, you know, long story short, just uh, I think that it's very, <laughs> it's very intuitive to make content. Um, it can be very effective to make content. It's just like, oh, this this thing so good. Click this video and win every match with this unit. And I, you know, it's probably not true of most games where maybe I just haven't been this in tune of a game for a while. But I think especially with Mechabellum, it is a trap. Because every unit is good in this game, every unit is strong in a certain circumstance, every unit is weak in a certain circumstance. Um, every unit has its place. And no unit on its own is just OP in this game, at least in my opinion so far of playing this for a couple of months now. I really don't feel like there's any, any one unit that's just too strong. 
Um, it's how you use the units and it's how you support them in, in groups and the way you position them. And I think that's someone in my stream chat pointed out a really good point that's um, very much emphasizes that where they're saying, if you look in global chat, there's always someone complaining about, um, you know, a unit going, how do I counter X unit? It's OP. And it's almost always a different unit. <laughs> you know, like I think I see Mustangs more often um, and stuff like that. But it, it's very often like a different unit, like, oh, this unit's too strong or stop this unit, um, which I think is, I agree is a good sign. So all that said, um, then why would I want to, um, as I'm kind of hinting at and trying to get into here, why would I want to then, you know, specifically try and uh, concoct some kind of strategy that I want to roll out, um, you know, more than more than once in that way? Because, you know, I'm here saying, hey, this game, you know, it really is more about how you use each unit in the position, in the timing, in the context, relative to what your opponent is, what they have and what they're doing, um, the timing of when you do it and, you know, how you get there. Well, because even though, you know, it, it's that balance, even though I don't think it's a case of like, oh, overlords are just OP, just spam overlords, or B damage shown on balls is OP, just do this. I don't think that's the case. But it is, it can be very strong to go in with a plan. I, I think you want to hit that balance of you want to go in with a plan of your own, but you also want to be ready to abandon that plan or modify it significantly at the first sign that you should. You know, it's, 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 with this game, it's not about learning oh, this unit counters that unit, because that's fine in the vacuum of one-on-ones, but it's about learning why does this unit counter that unit? Why is this unit effective? Why is this tech effective? And adding all these things to your toolbox of knowledge that you can then put together your own plans and builds on the fly in a match, and you have the knowledge available to assess what's going right and wrong in your battles round by round, and adjust for the next rounds, and, you know, turn losses into victories, and confirm victories even harder. So... That, that said, I do think going into a plan, you know, definitely is useful. Um, one thing that's helped me a lot lately is really planning to go into a strong frontline on round one more. I've been picking compositions that have strong frontline units. Um, and in, in this case, I'm going for something more specific. So let's get into it rather than talking forever about the, the meta around it and, you know, navel gazing. Let's talk more about what I want to do here on round one. So I went for quick supply specialists. This will be different how we can usually do things. But the general idea is that I want to go for a line of sledges and fangs as a heavy front line. I want to support that line with arc lights and phoenixes, and then I want to use those arc lights, phoenixes, and fangs to do some committed flanks on incoming rounds. And then hopefully, if that goes well enough, the plan is then to bring in fortresses in round five or six or something to support my main line while the enemy is hopefully too busy dealing with my flanks to really have got ready for it. And then, you know, we crush from all sides. So this is my first time you know, putting this into practice, especially, you know, it's against the bot, so it's a bit different if you're doing it against a player. But I want to try and workshop this with the bot. Um, so let me think for a second. So the bot is giant specialist, um, and the bot loves... Insane AI loves to flank really hard. Um, it's where I kind of got the inspiration to do a lot of flanking in games my own lately, like not just cheese flanks, but committed flanks. So I think I want to have my phoenixes on the sides to be ready for... Round three, round four, round five, round six. I reckon this boss is going to start like spamming melting points and fortresses and stuff on my flanks. Um, good to have your phoenixes in place here anyway, because they're great to immunize you against future things like Overlord flank, Rhino flanks. Um, Rhino, I mean, phoenixes will deal with that um, level to level parity if they're both level one pretty decently, as long as there's some other units there to tank for them. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and grab the fangs. I'm actually going to grab three units of fangs using mass recruitment and it'll leave me with 50 left over with quick supply specialist here which will be good for unlocking sledgehammers in the turn to come um i'm not gonna get a flank off like this but now i want to set up my fangs so here's my initial positioning now like i said with the fangs i don't want the fangs to be sacrificial frontline chaff for my plan overall starting without sledgehammers here um i don't want to put the arc up front because they will die too far too easily to the phoenixes um, and in general, that's fine, because I think I want the Arclights in general to be a bit further back um, during the overall order of battle. And because I want to have my Arclights ready to stop Crawler spam that comes in from the sides, that's why having... I really like putting Arclights like this, diagonally one back from the tower, just because it always makes them in great position for the AI to be like, oh, Crawlers, go kill them. Um, other than that, we've got the Fang line to the front, um, the Phoenixes, ooh, which we can put like this a bit more. Uh, Let's put it like that. Ready to go, and let's just see how round one goes. With that 50 left over. 
So the Insane Bot has a couple of Phoenixes too already, which they started with. Um, they bought a couple of Arc Lights, which is, you know, just a good choice in general. Um, and it's a really similar comp from both of us. I have one more Arc Light than them. But their positioning isn't ideal. Does get in on my, um, the Arc Lights do get in on my Fangs eventually, but not before I've killed kind of their middle. Um, the Phoenixes have a field day with their Phoenixes, and there we go. So, that, the Insane Bot can do things that really surprise you and do well against you, but in general, they're not going to be as good as a player, I think, as responding to you. Uh, so here we are in the second round. And what's really going to help me here, I think, is going to Plummet Module. Okay, I could have skipped as well. But the idea now is um, to beef up my line, get some sledges. So we're going to grab a couple units of them. And we, I, I do want to have, oh, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to HP so bad. Um, we do want to have the sledges come up, so give me one second. So placing the sledgehammers like this, and this isn't like some kind of big brain, like trying to think about what the enemy is going to do to us. We're not trying to do any kind of reads or counter reads or future reads. We're not trying to do any of that. Just trying to build for my comp, think about my game. Um, so the sledges here. Well, meanwhile, they get, you know, Insane AI does interesting things. They're going to do charge shot on the arc lights. This is probably actually pretty good against my sledges um, overall because it wipes out my fangs and gives them enough damage to actually kill sledge squads. Which, you know, pretty impressive. Arc lights are a pretty good unit. I think sometimes it can feel like it's hard to make them do what you want. But they're honestly like just really good, reliable crowd control that can be buffed up with a little bit of damage to kill many kinds of units. Go up to kill squads as well, like sledges and balls, you know. Like, they're already great against Mustangs. But in this case, you know, Insane AI continues to be my testing dummy here, and we're going to beat him up pretty easily. This is great for what I want to do later with the Fortresses. We've got another Repair Kit. Uh, and in this turn, what we want to do is now try and do something fun on the flank, I think. So what I want to do, I want to upgrade. I, always, I don't want to miss out any upgrades. So I want to upgrade both of them, which can make it a bit harder because I'm being successful in these first rounds and thus getting XP to now do what I want to do here. But I think what I want to do now is execute my planned flank. My planned flank here is to bring in arc light, uh, probably another arc light, and give them armor enhancement uh, along with a fang uh, on the sides. And that should be pretty effective in getting forward to a tower. So let me just do that. I'm placing here, uh, what I'm trying to do is have the fangs currently for this round screen the arc light coming in. I've noticed that when I put an armored arc light on the flank when the enemy has nothing but mustangs, it should, it should be basically immune to, that it still took a lot of damage as if it didn't have the tech. So I have a hunch that when your unit is warping into the flank, its tech is not yet active. For that reason, it's pretty important that we screen the arc light at least a bit from what might come in front of it. However, I don't want to place these units too close together or else they'll get missiled so if we just do it like this split up a bit of the fire yeah the idea is that the arc light survives long enough to warp in get its armor enhancement and then kill all the fangs while meanwhile enough fangs survive long enough to kill the phoenixes so we also don't want to pull too much attention onto the fangs um bit of a tricky game here but hopefully i've done a good enough job oh the ai flanks me uh, that does a very similar thing on my flank honestly um Oh, they like deployment module? The fangs? Ah. Well, my phoenixes are, are in place of fangs and arc lights to kill that quickly. Whereas on this side, they've taken away the fangs I was just flanking against. Um, my fangs really need range enhancement to be good against those phoenixes, but for right now it's okay. I still win the front line, especially even harder, because I pulled a lot of their... Um, what would have been on their front line apart. This is a great thing about flanking in general. That it's, in, you know, not immediately intuitive, but important to keep in mind, is not only are you fighting your own battle to win the flank, but by fighting this flank battle, you are pulling forces away that would be on the front line. And thus, you know, if the balance of power was already in your favor or was close, then pulling apart the enemy's formation that would have met your front lines obviously makes it even easier for your front line to keep going. So that's something that's very powerful about flanking, not just as like, oh, I, I threw crawler in, I cheese, I get crawler, round two, oh, tower, tower, oh, you know, apart from just doing that. Um, actually committing to a combat, uh, using using the flank as a combat battle space that you don't just abandon after one round of a surprise attack, 
can be really effective. Um, you know, which I think I was talking about in a previous match just before this one. I don't know when I'm going to put that one up. But anyway, now, so let's keep, ex uh, keep, keep, keep my man on the plan. Let's keep executing on what we want to do here um, with a test run against the AI bot. And then we're going to try this against the human after this, after we've workshopped this. The reason I wanted to show you it here in the insane AI area uh, is so we have time to talk about it in general, yes, but like... Um, I just thought because like I'm, I'm saying you know don't don't just follow blindly this unit is good this unit is bad or don't don't please don't follow like a counter chart of like oh get this unit if they get this unit um, because it's it's way too contextual I think for that so then you know I want to offer an alternative here which is I guess try to show my thought process as I go through what we're doing here um, and if there are any problems how I'd workshop through them though so far it's working really well against insane AI so but it still gives us a, a chance to talk about the strategy and the idea behind it um, one of the ideas behind this plan of mine, which is basically to start out with this comp of fangs and sledges, add in arc lights of armor enhancement, um, because with fangs and sledges, I predict, you know, the human is probably going to go for, well, if they didn't already have phoenixes here, the bot might have done it too, you know, marksmen to kill the sledges, and then, you know, you can bring, you've got your own phoenixes to go if they go ball heavy, um, and then if they go heavy for mustangs, because you've gone heavy on phoenixes, because let's say we flank in round two of the phoenixes or round three, the immediate counter is phoenixes or fangs, and then you go armor enhancement on the arc lights to be immune to that and buff up your flank instead of running from it. Um, anyway, I didn't do exactly that because you've got to mix things up with what you've got available. And that might make this a bit confusing to follow, and I'm sorry. Um, hopefully this will make sense as we keep going. The, the, the deeper meanings of why I think this actually might be quite a good just general build for me to start with in a lot of matches. Um, anyway, let me look at my re reinforcements. I am going heavy on fangs, but at this point I've already put down, I think, a lot of the units of fangs I want to for this match. So getting elite fangs at this point doesn't do, a, a, I think, a massive amount for me. Plus it costs a lot more, that's like an extra 100 on the cost of each fang unit, which makes it hard to get down as many as I want, um, and probably isn't very cost effective here. I'm not using marksmen, so incendiary bomb makes the most sense. Even though their army like isn't really clumped very much for incendiary, you have to assume that, you know, maybe they will be in the time to come. i got to think about this flank too over here. Um, dealt with it pretty handily because the phoenixes kill the arc lights of the way the AIs position them um, pretty fast. They'll kill this one and then they should aggro onto this one, which then allows the fangs and my arc light to just clean up back, or it should unless they do something crazy over here. Um, so in this case, maybe even just hang on to the incendiary and see what comes because they're not really like a great bunch of stuff to use it on here. Um, instead, um, just upgrade. And this would be the turn I think where like, yeah, I commit harder. To, to one of these flanks, like I bring in the jump drive, probably just jump drive and more phoenixes. Uh, maybe get range enhancement if I could afford it on my fangs too. So if I can keep this flanking effort down to like uh, only 400 credits or less, then I can get range enhancement on my fangs. And that will also really help because that will allow them to do what we want to do, which is to sit behind the sledges in general. Though with the AI here, they're really falling over to my front line anyway, so it's not been a, a very big deal. But still, let's try and you know execute on this plan because this is the plan for, for human rounds, right? So let's see. So I'm going to buy another Phoenix here to try and make this work economically. Another Phoenix here. And I think if I get Sentry Missile, it'll only kill the ground units and not the enemies at the same time. I could be wrong though, in which case I need to rethink my positioning here. Because you want to clump like this, because then the enemy just goes, cool flank, puts a missile here and kills everything you have. Um, so with that in mind, maybe in the future the Fang should be up here. And then the Phoenixes should be like this. Um, you could even worry about that this to well anyway we'll just see if the ai does it to me i'd rather learn against an ai than a human if if missiles can go kill both ground and air at the same time in the same clump so we do that there um and then what i can do is i can go like this over on this flank i can save money here by using deployment specialist to bring an arc light over to here as well uh, to, to do the same thing on this side of having to spend the money on it for this specific turn um, and then what else? I, w I really want to get that range enhancement on my fangs, so I'm going to get that now. And that was everything I wanted to do, that's right, so hang on. Um, what I want to do is, um, if I get the defensive up, the 100 cost, uh, you know, the 1-1, one, one, get the plus 1 for my defense, um, there's some really good things it does for me in this match. For one thing, it makes it so that they're phoenixes, um, will have to two-shot my sledges instead of one. The other thing is it'll make my fangs um, have a way better trade against each other. So normally with sledgehammers, and this is where the breakpoints get really interesting as to when you should buy these things with attack and defense enhancement. Usually with sledgehammers, 3264 HP, phoenixes have 3267 damage. So obviously that one shots. However, if you get the health increase, 
Um, now you're going to push over 3264. You're going to push over the ability for the Phoenix to one shot you just barely. Now, this matters less when there is small units like Fangs to clean you up afterwards. But in general, like it, what, especially because the Surges will probably kill the Fangs a lot, but the Arcos will still clean me up. But it, but it still does mean that like these Phoenixes are just that bit less effective at killing your Sledges, which is a uh, you know a bulky part of my line. The other thing is that it makes Fangs, um, which have 117 health um, and 54 damage against each other, take a quicker time to kill each other. So normally 54 times two is what 108, which isn't going to kill. But if you get the um, attack upgrade. Uh, this is another interesting breakpoint. You can make it so it's only two shots to kill instead, right? Because you've got 15% more attack, which is going to help Fangs v Fangs win a lot more. In this case, their Fangs have the Ignite upgrade, but because I have range, it would still be good. I can't get both here, though. Um, what are the Phoenix? The Phoenix is going to be busy with the flanks. So in general, probably just getting the attack upgrade so that my Fangs kill their Fangs quicker is maybe actually better here. It'll also help me kill the Phoenixes quicker because the Sledge is not really the thing that's in big danger right now. So we'll go for the attack upgrade instead. But yeah, other than that, like this is the idea. I just need to position position them's right. Um, them them phoenixes are gonna mess up my fangs a bit. Here is the only thing. But other than that, you know, we'll see how it goes on both sides. So they add even more to their flank. I told you in saying I loves the flank. Who do you think I learned this from? I keep saying it. Um, I'll win that right flank with the Phoenixes. Because of their positioning, my Phoenixes still do good here. My Arclight wrecks all their fangs once the armor enhancement comes in. My fangs are going forward and they've been taken out by the two units of enemy Phoenixes too quickly to do much, but that's okay. Paralysis Tower effect goes down. And you don't have to win all your sides at once when you're doing a maneuver like encirclement like this. You only have to win one to, to win the whole game eventually, obviously. And early on, you only need to get one tower to get a big advantage as well. Which we do pretty handily here. Come in. These are ranged phoenixes, so they're definitely stronger than mine. But my plan here isn't to be just like strong with a single unit, it's to be strong with a combined force. Alright. And with the bot only having 358 health, there's really only time left to um, get, get, get the last of this done now. Um, I would probably want to take extended range phoenix here. Can you actually... Hang on a sec, can you actually place shields? Like no, I, you can do it the call and I learned in the tournament last time. Anyway, upgrade the arc light. Um, it's going pretty good over here. I mean, those are ranged fangs, which are definitely... Or it's not ranged, those are mechanical rage fangs, which are definitely scary on my left. Uh, but this is probably a great time to bring in the fort, which I planned for. One thing I'll say, which a human probably wouldn't have done here, is he, the, the, the AI got ignite. Um, even though I, there's no units I have that really makes it that much better against. However, <laughs> funnily enough, big brain, um, galaxy bot brain, it is really good for what I want to do then, which is to go to fortresses. Now, if I saw a human do this, I probably wouldn't go for the fortresses, right? Because, I mean, I'd respect the human more. Sorry, bot. Um, but your, your responses are kind of limited, and you do weird shit sometimes, and sometimes it works. Um, but with a human, I think if you played fortresses into this many ignite fangs, you probably wouldn't be doing the smartest work of your life. It's not terrible, like ignite does fuck fortresses up really hard. It's not terrible though because you have a combined force and all the fortresses need to do is support the force, not fight the fangs on their own. But still, the amount of arc lights here, it is pretty scary. Um, I think having your own arc lights to kill the fangs though is fine. But yeah, so the, the plan is to get fortresses. I can only really get one here. I don't know if in a real match, if I'd go for them at this round too, because it's round five, like it's a bit early. I think I probably wait till round six, and I can like get two forts at once. We're gonna have to pay the unlock cost for them as well. Um, but in general, I do just want to kind of like see the full comp because the the, the point here is to kind of like workshop the comp, right? In reality, though, I mean, you know, let, let let's let's play more like in reality. Let let's see the option in here. Um, in reality, I would probably just double down with more phoenixes on the flanks. Um, you know, a phoenix here. Uh, just come in, come in harder on the flanks, um, and probably buy more upgrades. So I'd probably actually go, like, another Phoenix here. Um, what other upgrades would I really want? I've got range on you, armor on you. I would probably really like a sledge upgrade, like damage sharing or field maintenance. Um, field maintenance means you probably do a lot better um, against, like, here, go like this. And then probably get defense specialist as well. And then buy two more units. So this is probably a good time to like buff up my left and my front line. Um, I never got that many phoenixes, which would make me quite... Well, I, I got more, but they're on the flanks, I see. Um, I was going to say it would make me weak too if the enemy was sent to play a big giant, but I actually had them on the flanks, so it's kind of alright. 
Um, yeah, so I think at this point I would just want to, like, shore up my left. Maybe put, like, a unit of sledges on the side over here. Like so. And let them kind of fight all this stuff. Uh... Do you want to let them come in a bit more? I, I kind of want to take the heat off my fangs, is what I really want to do with these sledges. Even if that's all these sledges do, that is useful. Because the sledges will still be... I mean, the, the Arclight still will be good at killing these sledges, but it'll allow my fangs time to kill all of their units. And with the attack upgrade, they should be two-shotting all these fangs so they get through them quickly with my Arclights, and, you know, yada yada yada. Um... And then maybe do like something similar on the other flank to expect them to go on the other flank harder. I don't think that's probably too likely here. Um, can I just like incendiary their whole line? I can just do it over here, I guess. Just like incendiary their whole line, meanwhile. Like so, just because this is probably the last round of the match. So you may as well do it. And we'll go for another unit spawned. And we'll get another unit of fangs over on this side. Get a free unlock and then see what happens. So they invest more in their phoenixes. It's a big old slaughter of a battle here. These sledges do get kind of sacrificed to take tank time for the fangs, but that's fine. Um, this flank is losing overall to the massive phoenixes, but this one wins. Again, remember, you don't need to win all the sides at once. You only, when you're fighting them three sides at once, you only need to win on one of them early on to get that tower. And you only need to win on one eventually overall to win the whole match. Um, the incendiary is kind of dumb here because I'm going to kill all my own units unless I kill those phoenixes quickly. Uh, funnily enough, field repair will save them. And I won't lose too many fangs into the fire. Stop marching into- Ah, oh, the humanity! But you yeah, know, there you go. We, we choke insane AI bot out pretty easily there. And the, the insane AI bot can be a good warm-up, I find, for me. Um, because sometimes it'll do things and you you will be just be surprised how well they work. Like they'll just put like two two flanking melting points and you're like, that's so dumb, and then it kills you and you're like, what the hell? Uh, or you know, they buy weird upgrades like charge shot arc lights uh, immediately and you're like, well, that, that's that's big, and then like it kills your sledges and you're like, oh, well, there you go. Um, but you know, in general, I think they're more just kind of doing stuff a bit more randomly and seeing what sticks, as AI sometimes likes to do. But you know, we get to see the plan we have here, you know, test it against before we do it against the player. So we never, we never get the forts out here, we win too quickly. But the idea is, yeah, pretty much the same. Fangs, sledges, and arc lights in the front line. And then we can use a nice combo of cheap armor-enhanced arc lights um, and fangs to then make a real solid beachhead uh, on the flanks. And then we can back that up with phoenixes later on. The big thing that I like about this kind of strategy that you don't really see the, the bot be that weak to is it's a strategy where I plan that it leads people down certain roads. The idea is that if I have um, sledges and fangs, okay, sledges, you know, marksmen are decent at killing them, but because of the breakpoints, marksmen waste a bit of time killing them. So sledges are actually a decent unit to tie up marksmen for a while, and they're not that expensive to do it with. Um, so the idea is that the sledges meet first instead of the fangs, um, and then once the sledges are dead, hopefully, especially once you bring in the phoenixes, you've killed the enemy's things that can kill your fangs, like sl uh, enemy sledges and arc lights, and then your fangs come in as a second line. And if your enemy has gone, you know, heavy into marksmen or something to try and kill your scary sledges, uh, early on they can be quite scary, especially with field repair. The plan is you get field maintenance on them, which is another cheap upgrade, and then that makes it so really they need a single target unit to kill these sledges. Um, and then anyway, the plan is once you've used your phoenixes to kill their front anti-crowd units and your sledges finally die to whatever snipers they get, then your fangs come in as a second line of range enhancement and they, they duel and kill the enemy snipers and fangs with range enhancement are going to do a pretty good job against marksmen and phoenixes unless they're in a critical mass against them. Uh, and then the idea is that, you know, because my single target is phoenixes and the idea is that I'm flanking with these phoenixes, maybe doing a cheeky jump drive flank round two, right? The idea is to get the enemy to overcorrect to air. Whenever uh, the average player is really punished by air, I think the first unit everyone thinks of is Mustangs. The second one everyone thinks of is maybe just Fangs of your own or Marksman. But I think Mustangs is, is the knee-jerk anti-air quote marks unit that everyone goes for. The idea then is that you have the armor-enhanced arc lights early on, and that's why you want them as part of your comp anyway. Because then, if the enemy goes really hard for those Mustangs, then you bring in the armor-enhanced arc lights and uh-oh, now you are incredibly, you know, incredibly at risk to just wasting your Mustangs on my armor-enhanced arc lights and my Phoenixes continue to get to do what they want. 
Um, I think because the tech doesn't work as they're warping in or it doesn't seem to, it makes it a bit tricky. Like, you either need the flank specialist card or the shield airdrop that you can place in the flank zone to allow your arc lights to warp in before the Mustangs just kill the arc light anyway. But if you can get the arc light warped in with the armor enhancement before the Mustangs they place, usually in the back here, come over and kill it, and that's why the Fangs are here too as a chaff, then, um, you know, you're laughing. So th that's kind of the idea of the Fangs as well, is they're a cheap chaff to work with the arc light. They're basically here to just give the arc light time to warp in for 100 cost for the unit. And then once the arc light is warped in, the idea is that whatever enemy unit they have placed here to stop your arc, uh, to stop your phoenixes that you flank with in round two possibly or whatever, like Fangs or Mustangs, is now completely worthless against the arc light and the arc light kills them. And then to deal with that in the subsequent rounds, they're probably going to bring in, oh, oh, you know, oh crap, Sniper, bring in Marksmans or Phoenixes. And then the idea here is you already have the Fangs to screen for the Marksman or Phoenixes a bit, depending on where you're positioned. And we should probably put the Fangs here in the arc light here so that they screen against the Snipers better. So you can't just snipe them. Uh, and then you have your own phoenixes that kill single targets, so if they try to bring in arc lights to stop the fangs, you have the phoenix kills it. If they bring in marksmen, phoenix kills it. Bring in phoenixes, phoenix kills it, while the others are frontlining for them. Um, and then you kind of mix this up to stay unpredictable, so maybe if you have, you know, like the deployment module here, I, I could flank in round two here, or round three, and then just switch over to the other flank. And the idea is to keep them off tempo, like, make them overcommit to one flank, like, oh, this flank is wrecking me, I'm going to spend all my units this round just stopping this flank, and then, uh-oh, I've moved over here, now I do it to you on the other side, and then you go, oh, i got to do this on this side, now I go back to this side, I reinforce this one again, and make it even nastier, now you're trying to deal with two flanks at once, and the whole time you're doing that, you're not answering my front line, which is why it needs to be so strong early on, because if, I, if I'm losing early on, I can't really do this, because I have to just shore up my own front line, you know what I mean? Um, anyway, stop me if I'm getting, like, too theoretical here because that's why I tried to have an, a bot match here to demonstrate the idea. But this is the idea I basically had while not being able to sleep last night, is, hey, that'd be a pretty nice comp in Mechabella, wouldn't it? Um, hey, that could be pretty good. So, you know, all that said, um, I think what we should do now is go into an actual match, try to execute this kind of strategy against a player. It's never going to be the same, because you're going to have to start with different specialists. Here we started with a really early quick supply specialist, which let us sure up the front line very fast. Um, in other matches that won't be the same. You won't always get, you know, the deployment module to make the flank cheaper like it did the arc light one of the rounds. You won't always get the same things. The enemy will have different things that make this less useful. And more importantly, humans, I think, will probably be better at reacting to this on the surface than a bot will. Um, the bot was just like, hey, you know what? Screw you, I'm just gonna flank you as well. <laughs> and I don't know if a human is usually that aggressive. But anyway, enough talking from me. Um, let's now go and try and take this strategy we've kind of built and workshopped and go and test it in a real match. Let's see how we go. Now, in a, in a real match, um, the the big thing that we have to keep in mind if we want to win is be flexible. Um, not not trap ourselves in our own big brain genius. We do want to be flexible. This game may go in a completely 100% different direction to what I'm going in with a plan for. I cannot rigidly stick to this plan when it seems like it just won't work. You know what I mean? Um, but let's try to execute it from the start anyway. So, oh yeah. Aerial Specialist Arclight Sledgehammers seems like a great way to start this. Because we have two of the units we want in our comp already. We have Aerial Specialist to go into the Phoenixes beautifully next round. So this is ideal. The enemy has Cost Control Specialist. Extra 100 supply every round. But the attack of all units is reduced by 50% and HP is reduced by 50%. Also good for those breakpoints we were talking about. Of, For example, if my Fangs end up fighting their Fangs or they have Phoenixes to kill my Sledges. Now look at their starting comp. It is Stormcallers and Arclights. We definitely don't want to do... Don't do Column Sledges against Stormcallers from the start. Um... I think going like into the fangs here doesn't feel like a great move for round one against storms and arcs, obviously. Um, is it going to be good in general, though, is the question. Um, or do I just go for more arcs here? Uh, well, we want, the, we want the fangs to be screened, remember. So still go for the fangs. Let me just set them up here. One sec, let me just be quiet and set them up. All right, and the idea here is we're kind of doing that formation if we want the sledges to do most of the brunt of the tank. It depends what the enemy does. That's interesting. So they're using their cost control advantage early on to buy consumables. They're buying two shields, which will be really effective here, honestly, because I have no unit that can reliably kill shields, and it'll allow the Stormcallers to kill everything I have. So this is actually pretty effective, and especially if I don't kill the shields in round one, we'll net them, like, a lot. Just because I don't have any single target, it's a good way to punish the fact that I don't have any marksmen, you know? They have, a, they have an early, like, missile to stop me from flanking, too. 
But yeah, I think just here, the shields are just so strong that normally if you had a marksman, you get through them, but I don't have any single target, so they'll just win. They didn't buy any units, which is interesting. I don't think they bought, like, any units there. What can I do? Ooh, mass-produced Phoenix. Now that is, I think, very, very tempting to do here. What's your health? Your cost control, too. It might work out nicely. Let's go for mass-produced Phoenixes. So this lowers their attack by 40% HP over 40%, but it also makes them 100 cost instead of 200, which, which lets me just spam the shit out of them. Um, I really like that here, and I think it's what I'm going to grab, because I need single target, like I just said. I don't even know if I want to flank here. I think I just want to go, like, harder on the front line for this turn, especially because they're likely to put another missile down on the other side anyway. Remember, they're always getting 100 more money than I am. So I think here, just going for, like, a crap load of Phoenixes uh, in the front would be... Or not in the front, but, you know, supporting. Just supporting my main line here rather than going for the flank thing yet, quote marks, would be good. Probably get, like, three of them and try to overwhelm the enemy. Because the enemy didn't buy any units that round. That's the big trade-off there for going early shields, which does work for them there. But now they have no... They've not bought any units. So I feel like now I want to, like, just have a real tempo, tempo, tempo of buy units, buy units, buy units. Just buy units this whole damn match and really punish them. Or tr try to punish them for having a low number of units, a low quantity against me. Um... Okay. Am I worried about them flanking me? I mean, their frontline is so flimsy. What would they even flank with? The Fangs and the Arc Lights and the Phoenixes. I have, like, complete flank coverage of every damage type you would think here. Um, just do it like that. Okay, I don't know. I feel like this person's clever. What are they going to do? They're going to go with balls. Now, the Phoenixes do kill the balls really nicely. Um, a bit less, because I... You know, got mass recruited, but I also got more phoenixes, so hopefully it'll work out. I've, just, I've got a lot of them to kill them up pretty good here. I think phoenix is usually one-shot balls, so this might even work out better, actually, at the greater numbers. Sorry, uh, three-shot balls. So this might even actually work out better just having, like, less of them, but six of them. And, you know, I ought to win now because the enemy only has anti-ground, right? No anti-air upgrade picked on the arc lights. So there you go. That's, that's done, though. You're going to kill my ground. I'm going to kill your air. I'm going to kill both your shields. Uh, which means we get rid of that early round one uh, investment of the shields. Ah, uh, live little sledge. Oh my god. Oh, that little sledge so brave. Actually living there to add a tiny bit more damage. Like 33 more damage. What oh, is 100 still? Interesting. It's not based on per model. Anyway, so there we go. That works really nicely for us. Now, what do we expect the enemy to go against all those phoenixes? Well, they... I think the smarter thing for them to go is their own marksmen or phoenixes, because, you know, like, it kills my sledges quicker. Um, but I do think what we expect from them is mustangs or fangs, right? So this is a good turn to then get the armor-enhanced uh, arc lights. Ooh, it's hard to do on the flanks, but I, I predict also that they probably put them on the flanks. So if we could just pull the armor enhancement to the sides and do 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 our plan basically do our plan um some of these steel bullets also cool don't get me wrong that is also cool oh redeployment's amazing though wow redeployment's incredible here redeployment is so good so go for the armor enhancement <laughs> this is so like scuffed trying to get through the um through the this though um do me like two units of these and a jump drive. Hurry, 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 hurry here, hurry. I got plans, I got plans. I got plans and I gotta execute on them. Go like this. Bring one of these units over here. Get another unit of... Hang on, did I get armor enhancement? Yes. Hurry, hurry, I'm running out of time. Put these here. Redeploy this. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Time, time, time. Time, Dr. Freeman. And also get my defense enhancement. Did I do this right? Let's find out. So they do the Mustangs, as we expect. The missiles... Oh, it kills the Arc Lights. I was really hoping it would go for the dam. Now nah, that's trouble. Really hoping it would go for the dam. Um, that ruins my flank. I really thought the Sacrificial Fangs there would stop the Mustangs. I, unfortunately, completely doesn't. So I look like an idiot now. Because the missile goes for the unit I had placed the furthest back, I guess, because it was, like, in a certain position there. Um, do I still just win on the front? 
Not convincingly, so careful here. But the Arclight Armor Enhancement still exists here. So I do still win on the front. It's kind of funny there. Like, I still win, even though, like, I read, but then didn't... You know, I read what they do, but then, like, didn't deal with it properly. Just because the missile, like, still went for the arc. I would have thought it would go for the closest target, but I think what we just learned there is the missile goes for, like... Well, not maybe not whatever it wants. But the missile goes for, like... Um... Hang on, what was my reinforcements? No shield, or drop. The, the missile goes for, like, maybe not the closest unit, but maybe, like, the unit closest to its center line. So I need to put, like, another unit of, like, fangs or something here um, to, like, deal with that. I'm still winning on the front line, so, like, committing harder to the flanks on every side probably is good here. Um, to just really keep mixing it up for them. A Rhino Assault in the middle is not bad against what they have in general. I could also go Photon Emission. Actually. I can go Photon here. And it hopefully stops me from dying to missiles. Hopefully. I think I need like another unit of fangs in the front. I could have just redeployed one, I guess. But like this. And then like, ooh, upgrade these gamers. What? No, I hate when this happens. What? What are you doing? Stay there. I ran out of time, so hurry, hurry, hurry. Upgrade, upgrade, upgrade complete. There's another arc light over here. We want to, like, just eat. Eat the missile. But we don't want to pull that arc light over, you see. And then, what else? For this turn, just leave it like that. We might reinforce that more something else later. Um, let's also get attack enhancement for this turn. I'm probably gonna get RMB, maybe. Okay, no, they put a Rhino drop in their rear. And you see what I mean about until the Arc Light warps in doesn't get its tech next turn, it'll be more effective against the Mustangs, I think. This turn I have Photon, and my Arc Light's up. The Phoenix is really need to kill that Rhino for me. Which they're going to. I'm gonna win that right flank for sure, because now the Arc Light is just tanking. Oh, unless the Rhino kills it, kill that fucking Rhino! Oh, really important there. And I really need the Mustangs to not kill my tower. I need them to focus on this arc light here. Thank you very much and be worthless. Thank you so much for being worthless. Because, you know, it's read like a book, right? Like, what are they going to do? Oh, Phoenix is spooky. What are they going to do? Oh, we're going to go for Mustangs. Because we, we want an we AA unit to kill those, those Phoenixes, right? Because every single player's... First thought, I'm being hyperbolic, but every player's first thought, I just see it all the time, when you have an air unit that's strong, is Ugh, Mustangs are like Shilkas, they're like Tunguskas, they're like Vulcans, let's get let's get anti-air air cannon kind of tanks. Yes, sometimes yes. But you know, be aware of your opponent reading exactly what you're gonna do. The arc lights being part of our comp from the start makes it really easy then to just pay a hundred cost, get armor enhancement, and now those arc lights those Mustangs would have pushed you and killed my tower, if not for the arc lights just being like lol, lamau, no. Um the only problem here, I think, is my fangs are too far forward and are not getting tanked for by the arc lights. So we're going to bring the arc light up now, I think, to, to tank for them more. Um, what do I want next? <laughs> Assault melting point. No, maybe not. Hurry, hurry, because I keep running out of time here. I keep running out of time. You know what would be good is a fortress on the left of armor enhancement. Would be good. Would be really good. I don't know if I can afford it this turn. But i got to do something here. Uh, let's go... That, that free module. You can actually just give it this and it'll go in front, which is actually a cheaper way to have it tank instead. Upgrade, 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 upgrade complete, upgrade complete. I want to put another unit of phoenixes over here, right? And probably move this. No, if you move them, they'll be flank sick again. Just hope that like, you're going to walk forward, which you will. You will. Uh, and then what else do we want? Um, field maintenance on the sledges in the middle. As long as they're screened by more phoenixes to kill the balls in the center. I'm not there for free. So what are they doing to stop this? They're going, more Mustangs! They're like, you know what'll help this? More Mustangs. I'm like, are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, on the left, uh, yeah. <laughs> there it 
is. <laughs> And what did we say, right? This is what I was saying in my maybe a bit too long uh, insane AI workshopping period, but this is what we said. We said the reason I thought this would be quite strong is because it leads your opponent down a certain path, right? Is Sledges are already good against Mustangs too, but yeah, the idea is that you have a really strong frontline, and that frontline isn't meant to win any best in show awards. It's not meant to like win the battle on its own, it's just meant to be strong. Strong enough um, with two lines of Sledges are strong against. Uh, whatever else, you know, Sledges are strong in general, um, unless you get single target to kill them, and then hopefully once you've let the Fangs live long enough for the crowd units like the Arclights to be dead, the Fangs come in afterwards, after the Sledges have tanked for them, and now deal with your single target. In this case, it's not even working like that, because Storms are their ranged, and are effective against both Sledges and Fangs, kind of, they could be better. Um, but you know, you bring in the Balls to try and counter the Sledges in the middle. Balls are good, Balls are a good frontline. Um, but the problem is here, I also already plan to have single target in my line with Phoenixes. And the Phoenixes are going to shred your balls, especially because they're moving up without protection. So it's all about how these front lines meet. It's not just about what army is versus what army, it's about how the armies kill each other. Because if your front line is these units, they're dying first, they're not left to come in later. Reserves are important in this game. Order of battle is important. A unit that comes in early is your front line. A unit that comes in late is your carry. That's a big difference. Rhinos are one of the biggest ways you see this. That's a really big difference for their effectiveness. Um, obviously, a unit that dies in your initial front line helps soak for your army, but can't then come in later when it might be the pivotal time when nothing can stop them, and they're most effective. And that's what we're doing with the Fangs, where we want the Fangs to be a second line rather than a first line, uh, where you normally deploy them in front. Um, here, they're the second line that comes in afterwards. Um, the idea here of our comp as well is that every unit has, you know, well, not every unit, but the, the units have multiple roles to play. Okay, Arc Lights are good in the line anyway because people like to go early crawlers and, you know, even Mustangs and Fangs and stuff. So it's, it's just great to have in general. And it also provides me flank protection if you try to crawl me. But then also, I'm going to use them later for offense when I commit to the flanks with the armor enhanced Arc Lights. And the reason I'm going to commit to that is because, as we said, what, are, what is the opponent going to do when they see all our Phoenixes? Wrecking their lines, Phoenix is getting, especially when you get a free win, when ever opponent gets free wind against by air, which is what happened in round two, because I just bought air and they like had, all they have was balls, storms and arcs, they bought balls, they had no AA, and they lost because they're like, they didn't have a single anti-air unit. That always feels bad, and players will always tend to, unless they can fight their, their baser instincts, be like, ugh, anti-air, knee-jerk reaction, you know what I mean? Because they're like, I hated that feeling of losing to, I feel like an idiot not having anti-air, I'm going to get the best anti-air unit there is, Mustangs! But they have their own issues, because Mustangs are like the most vulnerable unit in the game, the armor enhancement, because they have the lowest base damage. And so in that way, we can kind of, we can read them like a book, we can play them like a damn fiddle. Uh, and that is, that is effective. You know, we saw in that first round where, again, the problem was because the missile killed the fangs in the first time we, um, not the first round of the match, but the first round we flanked, the missile kills the fangs, which are meant to tank for the arc light before it can warp in. And we did see the confirmation that until the unit warps in, hasn't got armor enhancement. But that also means that next round they do have it from the start because you only have to warp in on the flank the first time you place them there or if you move them around. So then the next time when we saw the arc light, beautiful, you know, the mustangs try to kill it nothing happens and this poor person i mean they have 2000 combat power but i don't think they i don't think they've been armor enhanced before because they were just like yeah you know what'll you know what'll kill the arc light faster than doing zero damage to it per second doing zero damage to it per second times four <laughs> i was cackling when i seen that i was like oh yeah and that's you know the best case here is the opponent just you know we've already tried to plan for this right by having the fangs to tang up to tie up some marksmen and stuff or, you know, the Phoenix is to kill the enemy marksmen if they come to kill the Arc Light. But it's the best case for us here, where they just didn't even do that. They're just like, ugh, ugh, any air mess things. And you, because usually you see this, you know, I've seen it. I'm not like some uh, ancient genius. I've just seen this enough. Players love to go Mustangs when you flank them. They love to go rear Mustangs because it kills a lot of units you usually flank with. Crawlers, wasps, when people are doing cheesy ambush flanks. But this isn't an ambush surprise. This is an ambush commitment. We are committing to this attack. And now your frontline v mine is just not very good in this committed war. Uh, and we're pulling their forces apart meanwhile, so then the, the reason we're allowed to do this is because we win the first rounds as well. Well, not the first round of the shield, but we win those first rounds um, really good with our just strong fang and sledge and arc frontline. That saves us from being flanked ourselves because, again, we have every type of damage here. If they bring in swarms, fangs and arc lights kill the crawlers or wasps. If they bring in big units, uh, phoenixes kill them. Um, air, two AA units. So we have a lot, no matter what gets placed for a surprise cheese flank against us, unless it's really committed and invested into hard, uh, like I'm trying to do to them, 
it's not going to have a hope, you know, one unit of crawlers, one unit of wasps is just going to fucking die here, which is what we want. Or even one rhino will die here. Um, I think one thing that I noticed is that, yeah, because my Arc was so far back and my Fang so far forward, it made it then hard for the Arc Lights to then come in and tank against the Mustangs later. Um, but then having the item that gives them more attack and makes them go faster pivotally then allows the Arc Light to walk in front. Not that it was really necessary, because at that point, <laughs> this Arc Light is online and just tanks a million Mustangs. And the great thing about this comp, too, is that even though it might feel cheesy to commit to the flank so hard, it isn't. Because, one, especially once they warp in, this, this this is just army v army. It's just that you're not fighting this, like, Napoleonic-style line battle, 1-1-1. One, one, one. You're actually going, like, fighting in three different places at once, you know? It, and, it, and that splits enemies up a lot more. It's not the standard that I see when I fight people at my level in the quick ladder right now of that 2000 uh, combat power. And people can have a hard time reacting to it. I think especially with Stormcallers, Stormcallers benefit from when it's just one big line that's clumped up, because obviously. So that when, when the enemy is, has like these strong Stormcallers that are doing a lot of work for them, especially from the start, it helps even more to be like fight from three places at once, because now the storms are, this artillery is only having an effect on one battle space at a time. It's irrelevant to these battle spaces um, that are fighting their own battles of, you know, just Mustang gear that I could destroy. Uh, and then, like I was saying, overall, my comp just isn't a cheese comp. Like, I have a strong comp. I have arc lights, fangs, sledges, and what's really making it all work, folks, is the phoenixes. The phoenixes here are the top damage in the match. Um, at least those ones. <laughs> These ones, I think I must have got more recently because I haven't done a lot. Um, I freaking loved getting a uh, mass-produced phoenix here because it just let me have even more of them. Um, and Phoenixes are just a really becoming a favorite unit of mine, maybe even my new favorite unit for just being marksmen, flying marksman twins. Um, they let you get so many of them out because you get two at once at double the cost, uh, at slightly better stats but slightly worse range. And it's just great because it means I'm already winning um, and then, you know, they try to bring out the balls. Well, bad news, bucko, I got Phoenixes. They're gonna fuck your balls. Fuck your balls, you know? Fuck your balls. Um, if you bring out giants, phoenixes will kill that. If you bring out overlords, phoenixes will kill that. Getting the phoenixes early lets them level. Level phoenixes doing even more damage are going to be even better against you. And level enough phoenixes can actually be quite tanky as well to things like mustangs and fangs. Uh, because, yeah, they get a pretty decent health power. And they can't die just like ground-only things like storm callers. That's another great thing I love about phoenixes versus marksmen. Is it's making your force less brittle and less vulnerable because you, you are committing to different battle spaces. Um, air... Not just as a cheese, not just as like a, oh, I can't shoot my air units, but like literally as like, these phoenixes can now be in the front line without needing range enhancement. They can be allowed to be right next to the sledges and fangs, and it doesn't matter because they won't get storm collared. They just cannot be hit by them. And it does help to have air units uh, in your army always for when you do get the situations where like there's no AA left and you just win. So that's always great too, and it's always a great way to punish people who like to go for ground heavy comps and neglect AA until they do their big knee jerk reaction and then, whoa, -oh, you can punish the hell of the Mustangs. Now, I don't think I need to keep talking about this forever because we did a lot of talking about the idea behind this in the AI match before. So I think we just saw it kind of work out nicely. I don't, I, I think the opponent made massive blunder in just buying more Mustangs against armor enhanced arc lights. I think because the arc lights died maybe to the missiles early on, they didn't realize. Like, I think actually it helped me having the arc light die early on even of armor enhancement because it was warping in and wasn't enabled yet because I think it makes the enemy go like, they feel a false sense of security. They're like, great, handle that with my Mustangs, no problems. Um, and, and the great thing about arc lights too is they are literally the perfect counter of the Mustangs because not only can they not die to them once you get the armor enhancement and you're on the same level, but also they, they kill crowds. Arc lights will just slaughter a crowd of Mustangs real quick. But yeah, I just said we're not going to talk about, it for, talk about it forever, and we don't need to, and I'll try not to. So yeah, I really like this. I'll probably bundle this. I'll probably bundle this with my other Maneuver Warfare match, and then put the Insane AI Workshop in the middle. And it might be quite a big video, actually. Or maybe I'll just put this one... Maybe you'll have seen that one already as its own thing, and I'll put this one out as a two-parter with the Insane AI Workshopping and then this one. Either way, no matter how you've seen it, you've seen it by now. Um, and yeah, I like this a lot. I'm probably going to keep working on this comp of, like... Fang, Sledge, Arc, Phoenix, because, again, like, it's not just, like, a cheese comp, and that's what I didn't want to do sitting into this, that's why I made a big spiel about it. I don't want this to be, like, oh, OP, like, like, I, I don't want to make a YouTube video that's like, oh, OP upgrade, Arc Lights with Armor Enhancement, too strong? And then the thumbnail is just, like, a billion Mustangs shooting the Arc Light. <laughs> and there's, like, a crying, like, Soyjack face, and that's my opponent, and I paint myself as the Chad. Like, that's not the idea here. I'm not trying to do clickbait, I'm trying to more do, like... You know, this is, a, this is a part of an overall strategy. 
And this isn't just a cheese that just relies on the Arclights having armor. This isn't, this isn't just like a cheese that relies on getting cheesy surprise flank wins. This is like, no, like I'm settling in your flank. I'm making a beachhead here. I'm fighting you here. You're going to fight me back. And I just have an overall good army composition. And then later on, we even have the plan to get the giants in. Um, like, basically, imagine this round keeps on going. Then you bring the giants in after. And right as your opponent is, at this point, hopefully still reeling, trying to deal with your flanks. Like, this is the round. Round six coming up, round seven. Then you bring in the fortresses in the middle. And even if they can now, like, bring in the precision answers to both your flanks at once, they've done nothing to their front line. And you bring the fortresses in. And... Your frontliner was already doing well, comes into the forts, and they clean up the flanks right about the time as your fortress line stomps in on their towers is the idea. Um, I'm still talking about this forever after I promised I wouldn't. So, hey, GG, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm happy this went about as well as it could for me <laughs> in my first PvP test of it. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll pr I like to mix things up and not do the same thing all the time. Um, but I'll probably, you'll probably see me like have this comp in mind in future videos uh, more often as well, because I just like all these units as well. I think they're good. Um, and the tech choices they have make them very flexible. But hey, he's in danger of talking for longer again, so let's end it there. GG, hope you had a really good one. Um, bye bye for now, and see you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye bye.